In discussions about the future of science, we often hear terms such as open science, e-science, or science 2.0. They all describe the same phenomenon. To do their jobs, scientists are increasingly using the World Wide Web. But what does that mean in day-to-day -day academic work? Take Ellen, for example. She's writing her PhD thesis in physics. Planning her research and choosing her measuring instruments are things she likes to discuss with her fellow students. In his day, her supervisor, Rick, had to attend workshops for that. Travel and accommodation cost him a lot of money. Using online video conferencing via Skype, for instance, Ellen avoids these costs. Ellen is working in an international project, so she often has to share datasets with her colleagues in France, Britain and Poland. Usually they're too big to be sent by email, and delivery by post takes too long. But special web services such as Dropbox allow Ellen to share her data online. Rick also is increasingly using social web tools to make his day-to-day -day work easier. Commenting on current discussions mainly via Twitter and communicating with his students through social networks. Whether Twitter, Facebook or Skype, Science 2.0 means that everyday academic work is becoming ever more digital. Professors no longer restrict themselves to schedule tutoring appointments. They also guide students and answer their questions through social networks. So Science 2.0 means organizing routine academic work with internet-based tools and applications. Meetings and coordination of work are organized via the internet, files shared virtually, and when two researchers collaborate to write a paper, they do it independently of time and space on the web. That the change from analog to digital has arrived in academic practice is clear. But what are the consequences? How is it changing the working habits of researchers? What technologies will be needed in future to provide optimal support for scientists in their work? How will this development affect academic quality? Science 2.0 is happening now, but the impact of this phenomenon on libraries and the research environment has yet to be investigated. That's why in 2012, the Leibniz Research Network Science 2.0 was founded. You can find out more at www.leibniz-science20.de. Look us up.